In this section, I want to introduce you to one of the most fundamental security mechanisms that exist on modern operating systems, privilege rings. I also want to apologize for all the Sonic the Hedgehog references which are going to appear in this section. When I was redoing the slides, there was this single slide of Sonic the Hedgehog, and everything after this was inspired by this one little picture here, I'm trying to use Sonic as a reference for how you can get those privilege rings. So, First of all, privilege rings were introduced by Multics in 1960s, which was the first operating system that supported hardware-enforced privilege rings. And Intel eventually added rings as well, and they are also enforced by the hardware. And so what you'll often hear is someone reference that, you know, user space code or user mode code runs in quote-unquote ring three. And so that's a reference to the privilege with which it runs. Also, you'll hear that kernel ring runs in ring zero. And so we're going to understand and explore what these rings are and how they're enforced. So specifically on Intel systems, the lower the ring number, the more privileged the code is intended to be. So ring zero is the most privileged code, and then ring one, ring two, ring three are subsequently less privileged. Now, Intel envisioned things like this initially, that ring zero would be the operating system kernel. And then in order to deprivilege the other code in the system so that it didn't have to you know, have the capability to do everything, you might have operating system services at rings one or two, and then the applications would run with the least privilege at ring three. So you could imagine some basic you know, operating system service like you know, memory copy between processes or something like that. And that might be code that the operating system would have run at ring level three, so that if that code was compromised, it couldn't do everything everywhere the way that it could if it was at level zero. Now that was the goal. In practical, uh, in practical terms, everyone pretty much all runs all of their kernel information, all of the operating system services, as it were, at ring level zero. So basically, you've got this giant blob of code running with the most privilege, and that's why you know operating system security is difficult because there's so much code, so much attack surface that users and attackers running at ring level three have many places they can try to compromise the kernel. So you will occasionally see systems try to make use of these different privilege levels to try to deprivilege code. And so paravirtualized Zen tries to do this. Paravirtualized refers to the idea of modifying an operating system to make it easier to virtualize, to make it work in uh, concert with the virtualization system instead of normal virtualization where you just try to completely you know, take an existing thing as is and you know, put it in a virtual environment. So paravirtualized Zen uh, has a modified guest operating system. And in that sort of environment, you might have your ring zero being the, the true hypervisor, uh, the virtual machine manager. And then at a lower privilege level, you might have, for instance, the management domain uh, that does not have you know, ring zero access, doesn't can't do everything everywhere, but it still has some privileges that are much more privileged than you know, normal operating system itself or the, uh, or the user space programs that run. So that's an example of how you could try to push some privileged code into ring one or ring two, but um, practically speaking, most systems don't actually utilize this. So in order to fully understand privilege rings, we're going to have to take a large and lengthy detour through a technology called segmentation. And in doing so, we will find the you know, presumably two bits which encode the four ring levels, you know, zero, one, two, three. So let's go ahead and dig into that now. 